about bed bugs? Bed bugs, yeah. Bed bugs. Right. So, so what's there in the mattress? On bed bugs? Yeah. <laughs> what about? Uh, starting in 2004, our annual budget was $42,000 for bed bug abatement. And in 2005, it rose to 89000 This year, we're projecting a budget of 116000 but the estimates are still being debated because we've almost reached 80000 of that, and we're only in the fourth month of 2006. Well, I think there's probably bed bugs. <laughs> they're little things in the beds, yes. Yes, they're bad. Obviously, we have to make that money up some, from somewhere, whether it be services, whether it be from general capital improvement. It's just going to impact us at such a degree that if we don't get a handle on this, we may end up even shutting the place down. The common bed bug undergoes three stages of development in its lifetime. The first stage is the hatching of the eggs, which can be attached to any surface, often located in concealed places. These eggs can only be killed with heat or cold. Poison does not work on them. From this point on, the eggs will hatch into nymphs, which after consuming a blood meal, will look like little blood drops. And in the last stage, these nymphs will grow into adults reaching a size of a quarter inch. These adults will consume as much blood as possible, eventually laying their eggs. Bed bugs, they're usually connected with um with dirtiness. It goes back in time, and during the beginning of the turn of the century, the last century. Uh, bed bugs were pretty pervasive in lower income areas, and what had happened was this myth uh, evolved out of this that said basically, you know, if you're poor or, you know, you're filthy because you've got bed bugs. But bed bugs are not. Uh, social climbers. They don't care what color you are, they don't care what economic background you are. One thing that we need to realize is that uh, the issue of bed bugs is not just restri restricted to people with poor hygiene. Uh, it cuts across, across the board. You see it in affluent hotels, we, we see it in low income hotels. It's really important again to get beyond that and to try to treat your problem as quickly as possible. Any soap works to kill them. Bed bugs, instead of using a can of Raid, use soap, kills them on contact, and doesn't leave any kind of uh, repellent residue, so it's not going to be scattering bugs. Yeah, the only form of this thing that's not susceptible is the eggs, like you said, and they're just impervious to uh, everything other than heat and cold. If you see over there that metal um, uh, dresser, uh, it's not going to get infested with bed bugs because they can't climb up the metal. And uh, the chair, which uh, we believe brought the bed bugs in here in the first place. So this is something that this tenant went and got from somebody else, and, um, and that's why he got bed bugs to begin with. One thing is, uh, yes, the, there's a big problem with people not reporting uh, bed bug problems. So live in a room, they will refuse service from a pest control guy when he's coming to do his uh, service. That happens to us. And uh, when you refuse service for one month, two months, and you have some behavior that is uh, making you susceptible to bringing bed bugs into your, your room, then it is a major issue. And then you're impacting the community around you you know, all your neighbors. So, um, you know, that's a big one. The first thing I'll say is don't use RAID or don't use some kind of a, you know, aerosol uh, contact killer. Better than that is soapy water, okay? And anybody in their house can take a little bit of soap detergent, mix it with water and kill anything on contact. Not expose themselves to any toxic chemicals and not leave a repellent thing that's gonna scatter bed bugs. Uh, the second thing would be vacuuming. If you vacuum any bed bugs that you see or just vacuum your bed, your mattress, the box spring, the carpet as much as possible, I mean as frequently as possible, you're going to be doing a lot of damage with this thing and you'll be picking up these bugs. Washing your, lot, your bedding is important. I mean I think everyone should be washing their bedding at least once a week for you know, other dust mite reasons or whatever. It's the same deal, you're using soapy water in a washing machine. But really, you're not going to be able to do it on your own. So you're going to need the advice and you're going to need uh, you know, the expertise of a pest control operator, definitely. So uh, you have to seek one out. Well, the first problem was at uh, the building that I live in. It's right in the heart of the marina. So, And it started back in September of 04. Of course, we were blindsided because we don't know bed bugs from termites or lice or whatever. And we did determine it was a bed bug. We cleaned up that unit. And I guess we thought that was it. And so it was the big secret which was the first mistake. And then months later, they started appearing in other units. Finally, we did a building-wide search and we found the unit that was so incredibly infested that they were crawling on the walls and flipping us off and waving at us. 
things. Yeah, there was an article in the Times a few weeks ago where these little hostels are springing up in Europe and New York City of all places, which is drowning in bugs right now, and that it's a cheap way to travel. And I'm like, oh, great, you know. Bed bugs have spread due to overseas traveling. Attaching themselves on furniture, bed sheets, articles of clothing, and other surfaces. Caution, always inspect furniture or anything else taken from the street. And I heard the other day there was a special about cruise ships having bed bugs. For example, that's metal. They don't bother with metal. That little table, I upend it every so often and check under it. I check behind the pictures, in the frames. There's absolutely nothing under my bed but there's a lot of diatomaceous all along the edges of the baseboard. The stuff that's in my closet is bagged, except, of course, the clothes that are hanging. That's why I recommend it to tenants, bag everything that can be bagged. Absolutely everything. We freeze from 48 to 72 hours at minus 20. And it takes a day to strip the unit, transfer the tenant get it loaded. We have two to three days to the truck and then a day to unload. You have to put everything in bags. You have to get rid of a lot of stuff. And then you have to replace that. So you have to replace any furniture that you have. Um, you have to replace clothing. You have to, do la you have to launder everything. Um, and those costs are very, very high. You know, this, it's an exhausting process. Bed bugs, they're annoying. But we can't let, you know, annoying and personal things get in the way. We have to act as a team. And I think the tools are there. We just need to use them. We need to establish protocols so we know what we're doing. We need to train our staff so we know what they're doing. We need to cooperate. You know, all these places, the city services, um, case managers, case workers, we, need to co we all need to cooperate together and communicate together. I would say within the last uh, six to 12 months, uh, my office has uh, received uh, a significant increase in uh, constituents reporting problems with, with bed bugs. You know, clearly I represent an area that's uh, very much impacted by this problem. I've taken it very seriously and hopefully uh, we're going to have a better system here in San Francisco for dealing uh, with this issue uh, in the next few months. If the bed bug uh, problem uh, is going to be eradicated, if we're to get uh, a better handle on it, it's going to take cooperation from uh, property owners, from the residents, from government. Uh, uh, everyone is going to have to have a role. Uh, the only thing that I would like to add is that the San Francisco Health Department is, tr is trying its very best to promote uh, the well-being of uh, all the citizens living in San Francisco. Sure, I think they could probably at least provide the citizens with information about it so they could take whatever steps necessary to get rid of them. And I hope that we can look at this as a very proactive, you know, in a very proactive way where we're all working together, teamwork, and um, and that we can make this, you know, we can, we can really address this in an issue, you know, egos aside and everything and just, you know, let's go forward, tenants, pest control operators, DPH, the city in general, and I'm really looking forward to that day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Bye. Bye.